This is our last Sunday morning service for this year 2019. 2019 is passing away. So in this testimony service, I got a very brief, or I don't know, very lengthy message, passage to share with you. The caption for this meditation is, this is your goal. This is your goal. If you got a copy of the Bible, kindly turn with us to 1 Peter, chapter 3, from verse 8 through verse 22, I'm going to read. From verse 8 to verse 22, from 1 Peter, chapter 3. This morning when we were coming to the church, uh, our grandson just asked me how many points I was going to share with. I said 12. So this morning I got 12 points to share with you. Please be ready to note down those points. And all through this week, and all through your life, meditate on them. This is your goal. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Finally, the word finally in the New Testament it comes in a few places if I'm right about five places but finally in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 is slightly different from generally what we say at the end at the end it is not at the end the word finally is different from in the Greek, it is different from all the other words which are translated as finally. This word means set out goal, point of termination, the end point. It's not the last or the final concluding remarks. This final is different. This should be your end point. This should be your goal. Move towards this. So finally, brethren, be ye all of one mind. Number one. This should be our goal. In the church, in the family, be of one mind. One mind, one heart, one soul, one mouth, one thought. We read all these verses in different places of the Bible. So number one, as we have come to the end of the year, this should be our goal. As a church, 
we should be in one mind we should be in one mind i got the mind of christ you got the mind of christ and we shall be one minded so when i think differently when i don't want to yield to the will of god then you yield to the will of god we cannot have one mind if the thought process that is in christ or the mind of christ the will of christ it is in me it is in simon then we will be in one mind because what he wants to do what god wants him to do so i got the same mindset it's very easy to get one mind in many families this is the great problem husband and wife they don't have one mind the mind of husband is different from the mind of wife there will be a lot of problem they may be living together they may be sharing the roof together but they may not have one mind it's a curse it's a curse parents and children they may not have one mind so it is not just a, a mind of uh, the our thought process the way we look at the things the perception it should be one that should be our final goal so finally be all of one mind number 2 have compassion one of another have compassion if i use a modern word have empathy one towards others empathy try to understand your husband through his eyes try to understand the believer through his eyes try to understand your pastor through his eyes this is the problem with many of us we gauge others with our standard we don't try to see their problems through their eyes so the literally here the word compassion means feel as they feel come passion be one with their passion so when jesus saw a widow of the widow of nain her only son died they are taking in bed the bible says he moved with compassion how is that possible jesus was able to see the situation as that widow could see the situation that is called compassion it is not mana durukam as we say in tamil that manam urugichi why manam urugichi why the heart was melting why the heart was melting he was able to see the situation as that woman could see when he saw the leper he was moved with compassion why should he move with compassion when he saw the leper it's not just sympathy the compassion is a more powerful word it is empathy so he was able to understand the situation of the leper as he would think as he would think this is where the problem comes in our families also so many a time husbands we fail to understand the problems of the wives many a time women they are unable to understand the problems of the husbands say for example a good uh, a believer christian couple he is working and she is a housewife early morning she gets up she makes everything ready breakfast lunch she gives breakfast packs lunch for her husband and he rushes to the office after she rushes to the office she uh ate the breakfast she did some work in the house she prayed and the lunch is already cooked then after some time she rested there's nobody to talk with in the evening she got ready waiting for husband to come she expected him around 7 o'clock it is 7 8 8 30 as and come she was almost like a prisoner all through the day within the four walls the husband went to the office he was a little late the team manager a team leader they said why are you late late i think why are you late late i think he was upset and he was to fix uh, finish the target 
was making a lot of phone calls, visiting places, talking, 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 talking. He was very tired of talking. Waiting when he could go home and rest a while. He was coming back. When you were just leaving the office, that's the time the manager said, Sir, I want to have a discussion with you. It's already 6.30. Yes, sir, yes, sir. He could not say anything also. Discussion, discussion, discussion. By the time another phone call came, this call came. He was leaving the place 8, 8, 10. This girl was waiting for him. Maybe from 7 o'clock, waiting, looking out, looking out. Whether he will come, whether he will come. 8.30 he comes. She said, Young and late, why are you late? He says, my manager is better. He asked me only after I went in. You are making me stand on the street and answering you. He got annoyed. She could not understand what the problem he had. Nevertheless, he could not understand what a problem she had. All through the day, no one to talk with, no one to smile with. She was just a lonely person as a prisoner within the four walls. See, what is compassion? When he can understand her, when she can understand him, they got compassion. The little word compassion is, it's not just feeling, uh, it's not just heart melting, it's not sympathy. It is more an empathy. So the number one, let's, let this be your goal. As a pastor, I should try to understand your problems. And as a believer, you must be able to understand the pastor's problem. And children, parents' problem, parents, problem of the children. See, the other day one girl was crying. They could not pay the fees. The father was coolly saying, the girl was asked to stand out in the class. The father was coolly saying, ah, teacher to say, para pay pondron sole. Apa para pay pondron daddy will pay this fees later. How delicate it would be for the child. Now father could go and talk to the teacher. Father was asking the child, oh, teacher to say, apa para pay pondron so many times we fail to understand how the child would feel. Many times we fail to understand how the father would feel. So no money to buy the things for this new year. Father has got no money. A child must have compassion. So that's a blessed family. My dear brother, my dear sister, your goal must be to have compassion one of another. And the third one, love us Brethren, brotherly love is different from eros. The love between husband and wife is different from the love between brother and sister, the love between the brothers. The love between husband and wife is entirely different. But the brotherly love is more of a possum. So here the Bible says, love as brethren, as an annan who love his tangachi or tambi. That type of a brotherly love. I must do something for him. I must do something for that sister. It's not just saying brother, brother, sister, sister. That's why in another place Peter says, unfeigned brotherly love. Maya matta sahodara sneham. For a few days saying brother, brother, sister, sister, then brother and sister, uh, lovers, husband, that's nonsense. That's a brotherly love with a hidden agenda. Saying brother, sister, brother, sister. That's absolute nonsense. That's why Peter says very carefully, unfeigned brotherly love. Unfeigned brotherly love. So as a brother would love his brother, as an annan would love his thambi, a rakka would love his tangachi, love one another with a brotherly love. And number four, be pitiful. Be pitiful. 
here the meaning is be sympathetic when you know somebody is suffering sympathy is different from compassion empathy when you know that somebody is suffering you are not seeing that through their eyes but you know they are in a difficult situation and with the ability and the strength the lord has given you you try to help them in their difficult situation that is sympathy it is not saying achcho achcho that is not at all sympathy again i say it is rubbish your achcho is not going to help anybody your achcho is not going to help anybody with the capacity the lord has given you the ability the lord has given you when you know somebody is in some difficult situation what the best you can do you can do in the ramayana there is a beautiful philosophy of that when they were to build a temp- uh, build a bridge for rama to go from india to sri lanka though it's a mythology there is a beautiful philosophy in it truth in it when the uh uh the apes are the monkeys they were able to do great things the squirrels they want to do their part they were bringing the pebbles to build that bridge it may be a story in mythology or it, but there is a fact in it when you cannot bring boulders when you cannot bring big rocks you can at least bring a small pebble what the best you can do the pitiful is it is sympathetic sympathetic is not just saying a chacho chacho helping somebody in need with the ability that you have got in again peter says don't do more than your ability you need to help anybody more than your ability and finally you suffer because of that is not giving loan to somebody is not just giving financial assistance somebody there is a chinese proverb if you give fish fish to a hungry person you can feed him only one time but if you can teach him how to fish you can feed him all his life so help him in some way is not just giving a fish but help him in a way that he can fish for all his life so pitiful is showing sympathy or in their dire situations in their difficult situation doing something that could help them and be courteous this word courteous is not being very gentle very polite the literal meaning is friendly minded friendly minded generally the love the attachment a type of a joy we have when we talk with our friends the feeling the attachment we have towards our friends may be different from all the others parents not only giving a parental care be friendly with your children your children will talk more frankly with their friends than with their parents children want friends so you be their friend laugh with them talk with them so they would be able to open their hearts with you that's what their friend mean so many people cherish their childhood friendship also my dear brother my dear sister still i am in contact in touch with many of my childhood friends even i am in touch with some of them my friends who are with me from standard 1 huh they write to me they talk to me i write to them i talk to them we are together from standard 1 many of my other schoolmates maybe from standard 5 about 50 people they are still in touch with me So friendship is a wonderful thing. Friendship is a wonderful thing. With some of my friends I got a constant touch with them. I'm able to share gospel with them. I'm able to lead my classmates to baptism. 
my dear brother, my dear sister. The same way, even with the many of the believers in the church, with the boys also, I move in a friendly way, I talk with them, I laugh with them, I tell them stories, I listen to their stories. I love to be a friend to them. Jesus is not only a God to us, Jesus is a friend to us. What a friend we have in Jesus. So in an unfeigned way, without any hidden agenda, be friend one to another. So a brotherly love and a friendly mind, that is the word courteous, it's not just being polite. Having a friendly mind is very, very essential. Now we'll move to verse 9. Uh, not uh, rendering evil for evil. Number six. If somebody has done an evil to you, don't do an evil back. It's a very powerful topic. I'll be requiring the whole day to speak on that. Say, so for example, evil for evil will never put an end to evil. You do an evil, or somebody does an evil to you, you do an evil, then they will also do an evil back, and you will be doing an evil back, it will continue. If somebody murdered a person, then the sons of that murdered person will rise up and murder the murderer. Then the children of the, mur the second murdered person will rise and kill those children. Then somebody friendly to those children will come and kill these children. This murder will continue, it's a chain. And number two, for any crime, legally, a person can be punished only one time. Now say for example, I have done some evil to him. Then he has done evil to me. So I am punished. My evil is settled. Now I am free. Please let, uh, come some, some more minute. Now, I have done some evil to him and he has done an evil back to me. My account is settled. For the evil I have done, I incurred another evil. Now, for the evil he has done, he is not a judge. He is not a judge. He cannot give punishment to me, but he has given punishment to me. He has taken the law in his hand. For the evil he has done, he has to suffer evil. He, he is not a judge. He is only a victim. So there is a judge. He has to pass the judgment. So the Bible says revenge is not yours. Even today in the court of the law, if I have murdered a person, somebody, or if I have uh, done a crime to a person, that person cannot do a crime back to me. It is the judge who has to give the judgment what should be done. He can't do it on his own. He can't take the judge, uh, position of a judge in his hand. So when I do an evil to him, he does an evil back to me, my account is settled, now his case is open. So please don't do that, thank you. Evil to evil will not be a solution. Number two, when he does an evil to me, when I appeal to God, now God has to give the punishment to him. That's what the Bible says. When somebody does evil to you and when you do good to them, you are pouring the coal of fire on his head. You are pouring the coal of fire on his head. Now he, the Lord has to give a judgment. I may forgive him. I may excuse him. But for the evil he has done, the Lord will punish him. So if I do, I, if I give a punishment to him, now the Lord cannot punish him for the second time. The Lord cannot punish him for the second time. So for evil, don't do the evil back. And number seven, this should be your goal. For railing, rail not back. For railing, rail not back. It would be a very, this should be our goal. At times we would fail. 
at times we would fail. When somebody is railing, what is railing? Somebody is abusing. Somebody is uh, uh, using a venomous. Uh, somebody speaks bad about us. The immediate temptation. We become abusive. Will not be polite. Yesterday a, t a testing situation came for me. Somebody was in an ir irrational way provoked me. But I believe it's a wonderful test for me. So I was provoked. I was very harsh. But I could not have a peace of mind. I had every reason why I was harsh. But I couldn't have a peace of mind. In the night, for the glory of the Lord, as a testimony I tell you, I sent a message of an apology to him. Very late night. It was very surprising. He was a man in his 90s. Midnight, he sent a note of apology to me. He said, Brother, forgive me. Really, I was moved to tears when I got up in the night when I saw that message. The flesh is crucified. I said, Sorry. He said, Sorry. This should be our goal. Probably, had I not settled that, I would not be able to stand today. Why do I say this? I preach not because I am perfect, but I preach, I also know this should be our goal. We are moving towards the perfection. So when somebody uses abusive language, even with a husband or wife or a neighbor or in a work spot, our goal that we should not use an abusive language back. We should be able to show that we are Christians. And every, any mistakes we make, we are all prone to make mistakes. You must have grace to set it right immediately. You must have grace to set it right immediately. For the glory of the Lord, I say this testament. My dear brother, my dear sister, and the eighth one, uh, in the same verse, but contrawise, blessing, knowing that you are there and to call, knowing you are there and to call, that you should inherit a blessing. So what I did, I prayed, Lord bless him, bless his wife. And he was able to have a compassion, the problem, the, the pains with which they are going through, that family is going through. I know they are in a very difficult situation, that frustration. Nobody should suffer as those people suffer. So I was able to think about him. So before I could retire, I prayed to the Lord, Lord bless him. Perform a miracle in that family. He is going through a lot of frustrations. There are a lot of problems in his life. So the only one thing, it would be very difficult, I tell you. It is very difficult when we are hurt, Ask God to bless people, those who hurt us. But we must know one thing. We are called to inherit blessing. And if you want to inherit blessing in your life, in 2020, or in the years to come, you want to inherit blessing, you should bless others. You should pronounce a blessing wholeheartedly, and you should be a blessing to them. You should be a blessing to them. You must be able to give joy to them. You must be able to give happiness to them. You must be able to help them financially, physically, intellectually. In every possible way, you should be a blessing to others. Unless you are a blessing to others, you cannot inherit blessing. The Bible says clearly, knowing that you are there and to call, that you should inherit a blessing. Knowing that, Bless them. 
those who revile at you, those who do evil to you, bless them. At times to pray, Lord bless them, it would be difficult. Many years back I had a, I mean I shared this in the testimony. Say in the year 21 I came to Chennai, almost immediately I joined into Hindustan Motors as a mechanical chaser. So in 21 itself I had a very laudable job. Then I came into teaching, maybe in 23, uh, I became a teacher. And in Madras, there were at that time not of many of my friends. So always I have been called in a respectable way in Tamil, what we say, Ninga Nanga. There was nobody to call me Nina Vada Poda. Even in our family, our parents, they don't say Vada Poda. Uh, so I, there was no occasion that somebody could call me in a singular way. No occasion. It is not wrong. But as I say, very early I got a job. And not only that, not many of my friends here to call me Vada Poda, here in Chennai. But when I was, uh, some years back, when I was touching, closing 50s and coming into 60s, in an angry mood, somebody used that singular form. Hey, ni, na. I was very upset. I could not pray for him. Two or three days. It was taking a long time for me. Maybe two or three days I was struggling. To say, Lord bless him. Lord bless his family. Lord bless his the doings. An occasion came that I could do something good for him. My dear brother, my dear sister, I inherit blessing. So to say, Lord bless them, those who hurt me is not very easy. But when you know that you are called to inherit a blessing, it is mandatory that you should bless others. When, you say, when I say that you should bless others, it's not only prayer, you should pray. You should pray. I pray, Lord bless him. I know Lord that the frustration he is going through. The way he suffers, nobody is suffering. Lord command a deliverance. Let your peace be on him. And also I desired in my heart, in one, some way I should be a blessing to him. It's not because I want to preach this, I say this. This should be our goal. This is my goal. This is my goal. I don't want to have any enemy. Even in my college days, I could not remember I had any enemy, no foe. Even the benchmates, I don't remember ever we fought or we pushed the books this side or that side. We are always friendly. We are always friendly. When we play matches, hockey, we, there may be rival teams. But after the match is over, they are, we all will go to the tea shop together. My dear brother, my dear sister, try to be, try to do something that you could be a blessing for somebody. Otherwise, we are, our existence on the earth is meaningless. Our existence on the earth is meaningless. Let me go a little faster. So the eighth one, be a blessing. Be a blessing. Especially in this verse, to those who speak, those who do evil against you. And those who revile at you, those who speak abusive words against you. Not only say a blessing to them, say a blessing, but be a blessing to them. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. And we'll go to verse 10 and 11. I'll read together. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. That is, the, those who are reviling at you, don't revile at them. If you want to have, if you love life, happiness, joy. So when I reviled back, I lost my peace. Yeah, if I want to be happy, if I want to enjoy my life, and also want to see good days, refrain your tongue from evil, and your lips that speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. 
So number nine, I'm going a little fast. Try to seek peace. So what is the big use of having a fight in the family? You don't talk to your wife, your wife doesn't talk to you, you don't talk to brother, you don't talk to sister, you don't talk to cousin, you don't talk to this neighbor, you don't talk to that neighbor. What is after all? We are going to live in this world, maybe for 70 years, 80 years. For the first few years we don't know anything. Then maybe till 20, 25 hours school days, college days, friends, jolly. Then we seek for a job, get settled, then family. Now you are 40 or 30, 50. After all another 20 more years, after all another 10 more years, after all another 5 more years. You want to see life, you want to enjoy life, seek peace with others. There is an English saying, when you are traveling, if your neighbor is your friend, the journey is short. When you are traveling, if the neighbor is your friend, your journey is short. Just imagine you are going in a flight or in a train. Somebody is sitting by your side. You don't talk to him, he doesn't talk to you. And there is only one hand rest. If he keeps the hand, you pushes it down. And if you keep the hand, he pushes it down. You are not giving weight to him, he is not giving weight to you. You are keeping a rough face and he is keeping an indifferent face. See, the journey would be boring. And somebody comes and sits by my side, I say hello. And he is compelled to say hello. I smile at him, he smiles at me. I tell him, I am Robert Simon. And then he is a blah, blah, blah. Then slowly I start my testimony. I share my testimony in a way with prayer that could interest him. And they listen to me. I can give you a number of examples. The miracles that have taken place in my journey. The journey would become very short. We enjoy. Mostly I choose the aisle seat. When somebody in the window seat, when they want to go to the restroom or something, I love to stand up and give the way. I feel that's a small exercise, that's a small relaxation. I was going on sitting for two hours, three hours, it's better that I would stand and sit. He would also be happy. And when he comes back, again I'll stand and give him the way. I enjoy that. I enjoy that. If you want to have good life, seek peace. Peace with everybody. When my, I see my neighbor to my left, to my right, I talk to them. They talk to me. I love them. My dear brother, my dear sister, for the, I'm not bragging about I love it. I love it. An elderly neighbor lady, uh, Krorpati, a Krorpati, when she would stand me very politely, she would stand up and she would greet me. I would greet her. My Pudimar her. One day one of our, our, our brothers told me, and the Amma Ketanga, Aya Nalar Kangla, Rendumnala Ayava Pakali. This side, Another neighbor, he is a uh, handicapped. He's got a, tri a three wheeler. But when he would see me, just he would give a posture as he was standing in that. He's a handicapped man. I'll be moved to tears. Why should he show that type of reverence standing up and saying hello? If you love life, if you love life, seek peace with others. Seek peace with others. My dear brother, my dear sister, for the glory of the Lord, I say, let this be your goal. I will be at peace with everybody, with our relatives, with our friends. I don't say that we should interfere in others' matters. Many people, they don't know even their neighbors. They don't know even their neighbors. They don't talk to them. They don't smile at them. When they travel, they don't speak with those who are sitting by. They don't share their testimony. My dear brother, my dear sister, for the glory of the Lord, I tell you, seek peace with all men. That is one of the mottos of our church. Speak evil of no man, follow peace with all men. With everybody. 
Paul tried. Even the own family, they don't talk one to another. I don't say you must talk blah, 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 blah. Everybody may not love to talk blah, 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 blah. I'm not talking about that. But having a love relationship with others is very, very important. Seek peace and ensue it. Seek peace and ensue it. We go to verse uh, 12. Verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And verse 13 to 15. And who is he that will harm you, if you be followers of that which is good? But and if you uh, suffer for righteous sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. So number 10. Okay, you are doing good. They are doing harm to you. Without any cause, they are hating you. They are speaking evil of you. God permitted that. You sanctify God in your heart. Praise God. Lord, you allowed it. Why is that man, why is that neighbor talking like this? Why is that relative doing like this? Why am I am cheated? Why they speak bad about it? Don't get frustrated. Don't get infuriated. Just sanctify God in your heart. Lord, you are holy. You have permitted this in my life. You allowed this misfortune in my life. You know everything, Lord. Everything is under Nobody can harm me. Unless you permit it, nobody can harm me. I am the apple of your eyes. Who can touch me? So you have permitted this evil in my life. They are doing evil to me. But there is something good behind it. You have allowed it. Even when the eagle dismantles the nest it has built, it is for the chick to be trained to fly. So even any worst thing could take place, it's going to be good for me. All things work together good for them that love him. So whatever the evil others can do, no evil they can do. When God is for you, when you want to do what is good for, uh, what is right with God, nobody can harm you. Nobody can harm you. When they do evil, you sanctify God in your heart. You sanctify God in your heart. Praise God for what he has permitted. Without his permission, no hair of you would fall. And the eleventh one, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. This is what we say, the apology. Why do you believe this? Why don't you wear jewels? Why don't you have Christmas? Why do you do like this? Why should we take baptism? Whatever it may be. Why you worship in a different way? You must be ready to answer. With all meekness. You must be able to give a reason. You must be able to give an apology. Apologia. Word for reason. Logia word. Apology. I must be able to give a reason why you do this. Why you believe this. Why do you dress like this? Why don't you dress like that? What's the reason? An apology. So you must be always ready to give a reason for what you are doing. And number 12. If you read from verse 16 to 22, seven verses. Now to save time, I'm not reading all those verses. The only one thing, it starts like this in English, having a good conscience. This should be your goal. Have a good conscience. So here in this passage we are able to see 12 things. Very briefly I have shared with you. And when Peter was writing to the church, he says, let this be your terminating point. Let this be your goal. Let this be what we So we have come to the end of this year. We are going to get in a new year. Let this be our goal. Let this be our goal. I'll, be, I'll have a, a friendly mindset with others. I'll have compassion for others. 
I will show pity for others. I'll be with. I'll try to be with one mind with others in my family in the church. The mind of Christ be in me. I love to be courteous with others. When they do evil, I don't want to render evil. Evil for evil cannot be an end. They will cause a chain of evils. The end for evil is doing good. That will put an end for their evil. And also when somebody reviles at me, very abusive, I am not going to be abusive. Knowing that I am going to inherit a blessing, I will bless, I am called to bless people. Not only bless people to be a blessing for others, to be a blessing for others. With all those things, before God, before men, Lord help me to have a good conscience. The five different types of testimonies are essential. One is the testimony from the world. One is the testimony from neighbors. One is the testimony from them, those who speak evil of you. Please listen. There are five important testimonies in your life. One is testimony from the church, your believers. One is from the world. Third testimony from those who hate you. I don't like him. But that fellow is a good fellow. That fellow will not lie. I don't like him. I hate his religion. I hate his, he's a fanatic. But that fellow is a sincere man. If he says he'll keep his words. So testimony from the church, testimony from general word, your neighbors, your friends, etc. And testimony from those who hate you. Number four, testimony from God. God should bear a testimony. My son, my beloved son. God should bear a testimony. And very, very important testimony. More than the church, more than the world, more than your enemies, your conscience must bear a testimony. Your conscience must bear a testimony. Having a good conscience... I can lie to others. I can even I can even cheat the place, our family, I can cheat everybody. Two things, I cannot cheat God. Okay, I don't know whether God is there or not. I cannot cheat God, but but whether I believe in God or don't believe in God, I cannot cheat myself. I can if at all I have to cheat myself, I should be a mental person. A normal person cannot cheat himself. He knows very well whether he committed adultery or not. He knew very well whether there was lust in his heart or not. He knew very well whether he spoke a lie or not. Can anybody cheat himself? Can anybody cheat himself? We are getting into a new year. Let this be our goal. Finally. The finally doesn't mean at last. This finally the terminating point in our Christian walk. 2019, 2020 and the years to come. Let this be our goal. Let this be our goal. Lord, keep me in a good conscience. Before we could proceed, just we'll have a word of prayer. I got a bri uh, announcements. Just we'll have a word of prayer. Lord, as we come to the end of this year, let this be our goal. I request Pastor Ma to lead us in prayer, then I bring the announcements quickly. Katadame, over the work of Kurve, Tarumbadi, I chebicro. Inum Katavi, carrying with Yanika, Ara in the Barka, the Kadaisi Katavi, and Atkil Varshatun, the Kadaisi and Atkil, a great seed, but it took a Katra the Visinga. Yes, Christopher Namatil Pida. Amen.